Hey guys, EBP Man here. Now, if you've been considering a 3D printer and want something that will print at scale, like something massively big, well, this is going to be a video you want to check out. Because check this out. Yeah, you see that right. That's me. That's a 3D scan of me that I've just printed. And if you're looking to print something of this scale or being able to print large-scale helmets or anything that would be appropriate like for cosplay, then this is going to be a 3D printer to consider. Today, we're taking a look at the Mingda 3D Pro. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now, the Mingda 3D Pro gives you the ability to print some very large sprints, just like I showed you, like, like you know, like this guy right here. Hey, how you doing? And it, this is going to be great not only for printing full-piece prints that you're looking to print, but it's also going to give you the ability to print things for sizing purpose. So that headshot that I just did, that was a 3D scan of my head uh, or my upper torso, I actually used this to size prints for me. So I'm able to put a helmet on there and see if it sizes well. I'm able to do some prints and just check it out to see how it's sized uh, to my features or to, again, to my structure. And it just gives you a sense of how large this build plate is. Uh, the build plate for the Mingda 3D Pro is a 320 by 320 by 400 millimeters. So you're talking about pretty substantial in size. So that means that most full-size helmets that you want to print, you're going to be able to print them on this printer without having to slice it. Now, in addition to having that large build plate that we just talked about, this printer also features a direct drive dual gear extruder. Now, controls and navigation, no dials in this case. Basically, what you're dealing with is a touch screen that's going to allow you to navigate all of the controls really easily. Now, there are not a lot of options, and it's a very simple menu system when it comes to all of your adjustments. Now, one thing, though, that I do appreciate from this printer is that once you set your leveling, if you need to adjust that leveling, you can also manipulate or adjust that leveling by adjusting it via baby steps, which means if you need to get a little bit closer, you can do that with the touch of a button. If you need to raise that print head a little bit higher, you can do that as well. That's going to save you enormous time when it comes to leveling. Now, the other thing about this printer is that it's really, really quiet. So if you're using this printer in a common space, you have it in the living room or hopefully not in your kitchen, but somewhere in the house and you want to make sure that you keep the peace in the house, well, this thing has silent drivers. Uh, really, it's super quiet. And as you can see here, there's really not a lot of noise that's coming from this printer, which is something that I also really appreciate. Now, from an adjustment perspective, you also have some really easy adjustments. So what I like about this is there really isn't any tools that you have to take out to do adjustments. So the XY belt has a tensioner knob that all you have to do is adjust it to get the right tension to improve your overall print quality. Now, the other item that I really like about this printer is that the build plate is made out of glass. So you have a glass build plate, which really improves overall adhesion. Now, one of the things that you'll notice here is that the actual uh, glass build plate itself had some, I would say, dual-sided tape on the very bottom, but that seemed to come off too easily. So what I did is I put some clamps on it, and then I also put some tape just to make sure it stays in place. Now, for those of you who are going to be running long prints, we're talking about maybe multiple day prints, especially because of the large format of this printer, it also has some really cool features. First of all, it has a filament runout detection. So if you run out of filament, you don't have to worry about you know, failing that print, especially if you're doing something large like the one that I was doing. Now, also it has, it has a resume power feature. So if you do lose power and you're in the middle of the print, as soon as you plug it back in, it's going to resume printing. That's also going to be a lifesaver, especially because I expect you to do some really large prints with this printer. Now, while this printer does not have automatic bed leveling, it does have support for BL Touch. And one of the things I really like about this printer when it comes to the BL Touch features is that it's already built in, which means that all you have to do is print out this adapter that uh, is available for, uh, for download, and you can plug in, literally plug in the BL Touch without having to solder any wires. All the wiring is there, everything is ready. All you have to do is add it, flash the firmware, and now you have a printer that supports auto bed leveling. Pretty cool. Now, before taking a closer look at the prints that I was able to generate with this printer, I wanted to highlight one other fact. First of all, this printer does support a wide variety of print materials. So you have PLA, ABS, and TPU. So you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to overall print. Now, as we take a look at this first print that we have here, uh, this is was printed with no supports. And overall, I was really happy with the printer. There are, there's some adjustment though, and realize that every printer requires tweaking. So this is using some of their standard settings, and I can see that there's some opportunities for adjustment. But for a first print without any adjustments, this is what you can expect. So take a look at this, take a look at how clean this is right here. We'll see how the bottom layer here is, looks really good. I have some cleaning up that I can do right here. And then you can see on the side here some failures, that with some tweaking, I would expect that this will get a lot better. Also at the bottom here, you can see the chin area. 
Uh, this I've done run this print before without any supports and I've had successful prints where the chin area here has no issues whatsoever. Now if we take a look at that first layer, uh, you can see right here, uh, the first layer did come out pretty good. I have some small defects here on the side, but I'm overall really satisfied with that first layer print. And again, overall, when you think about it, there's some little things that you can tweak, uh, but if you look at how smooth things are, even on the top here, I think it did a good job here and in the forehead and in the nose area, uh, but there's some tweaking that can be done. Now the other thing I printed, and I wanted to see if, if it could do this again without any tweaking, uh, was this katana. And this is one of those expandable katanas that you can just flip out and it will, um, you know, just expand in this area. And I've seen a lot of this uh, showing up um, in a lot of the boards. And overall, you can notice that I have a real nice rainbow filament. It did a really, really nice job in this print. But what it did do is it kind of failed in the expandability area. So um, I can see that I cannot make it... Um, you know, just expand as it should, uh, but I'm sure this could be solved with some small tweaking of the actual, um, again, printer settings. But I'll play more with this just to get this going. Now, the last print I wanted to share with you really illustrates how large this can get. So I'm gonna just put this right here in camera. And I did a 3D scan of myself using uh, my Samsung phone. So I did a scan and then I basically uh, saved this as an STL and I wanted to run this to see how it would run. Now this was, uh, almost two and a half days to print, right? And the amazing thing about this is that the infill is probably no more than 5%. So this is very hollow. Let me tap on it. Super duper hollow. But overall, if you take a look at this, the overall quality is pretty good. And I didn't clean it up completely because I, I wanted you to see what a print would look like. And I did put some supports here. So you'll notice here at the very bottom, I bring this on camera. So I have some supports here that were coming up to the chin. But you'll notice how easy it was to clean that off. The chin is relatively clean. And I really didn't put a lot of effort into it. I was just pulling off supports because I wanted to show you guys what the print experience was. Under here on the nose area, I can clean this up as well uh, for, the, for the supports that I had right here. And then you can see from, from a detail perspective, again, this overall print is somewhat smooth. It doesn't have all my facial details, but you know this is uh, pretty close to what I would look like. This is not a, I would say, a limitation with the printer. This is more the scan itself that I did. On the very top here, again, there is uh, very little supports on this. You can see how the finish is on the very top. Some of this is due to the actual scan itself because I probably didn't do a really good job of getting on the top, but this is what you can expect. I'm just gonna rotate this a little bit. Now the cool thing about this and why you'd want to be able to print something this large is because you can use this to support and test out any kind of helmets and large print items. Now just to show you why a large scale print, and I actually recommend um, you know one of these that you could do of yourself if you have a large scale printer, is because it really helps when it comes to sizing things. So here's this massive helmet, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide this on it. And now, I'm able to see how well this fits. So I'm gonna rotate this around. I'm gonna bring it right in front so you guys can see this on, on this side of the camera. So you can see that, all right? So this really gives you the ability to test out your prints. Now, one other thing I may do with this, just to harden this print, is I'm probably going to rub some resin on it, cure it so that it gets really, really rock solid. Because for this Halloween or for any other events that uh, Nilda and I are gonna be doing, I wanna have this ready so that I can size things. Now, I not only do we do 3D printing, but I also, uh, for, for Halloween, for example, I do a lot of prosthetic prints. So with that um, synthetic uh, skin, and I like creating things. And this is gonna be the perfect thing to fit things for myself. So guys, that wraps up our review of the Mingda 3D Pro. See you in the next one.